So I went back to rewatch Welcome to the Ballroom since I did a live stream last night, and I may not have paid attention to the entire episode completely since I was just having fun chatting with all of you guys. And so while watching the episode, I watched the ending song again because it had a very symbolic meaning, which I will get into. But then I saw the preview for next episode, and the first thing I see is this. I, I, I see Shizuku with this type of face, and I'm like... Okay, first impressions, there, there's obviously something wrong with the face. The face is beyond derpy. It's like, oh my god, like, what happened to her nose? Or just her face, or her face is just so squished together. I'm like, is, is this me? Is this Parasite? Like, are, are you serious right now? And another look at it, I'm like, it's pretty cute. It, it, it's cute, but it, it looks so awkward. And I'm like, oh my god, like, uh, thankfully... Thankfully, that's probably going to be fixed the time the episode comes around next week because, you know, the previews usually just rush together and all that, so that'll probably all be fixed for the next episode, but I just had a good last scene in that preview, you know, sequence with that derp face. Anyways, let's get into the next thing. While watching the episode and paying a little bit more attention to the dancing and all that, this episode was very slow-paced, actually. It really just focused on... Fujita and Mako, them dancing, and that was basically it, just their one dance throughout this episode. Now, we did have a flashback, but it was a very slow episode. It's kind of like an entire minute, it's like a whole minute was compressed into a 20-minute episode. It's kind of like we had Frieza time throughout this episode. It's like Frieza, you know, says five minutes, but, you know, five minutes is actually, you know, like 48 minutes or whatever. Well, in this case, you have it to where... One minute was an entire 20-minute episode, and, I mean, I'm not complaining, actually. I mean, it was a good episode. It was a solid episode, and I have no problems with the episode. There was a lot of meaning here, character development, characterization. I have no problem with the episode. Just the big thing was, is, like, after watching it, I realized that the episode, the, the pacing was just really, really slow compared to, like, the previous episodes we have gotten. But um, while watching it too, I got to see a good look at the characters and the way they were moving and stuff, like the way their bodies were positioned. And I want to show you a picture, okay? So you know how Mako, she was, you know, dancing and it looked beautiful and all that. Fushida was dancing with her and it, it just looked really good. It was a really nice style of dance they were doing. And if you watch my live stream, most likely you saw what I said, extra thick and stuff. I was like, thick. But, uh, but after watching it and looking at, you know, her figure and all that, I realized that her body body proportions were completely fucked. Let me show a picture. Here's the picture. The first thing you hear as soon as you hear this, when this is happening probably in the actual show, you're probably hearing some cracking noises. Because like, that right there, that does not look natural. So with that being said though, besides the weird proportions of the body, which has been a big part of Welcome to the Ballroom since it first started coming out. I mean, when it comes to the neck game, the neck's always, like, super long and stuff. It's for, you know, the animators to express the dancing and all that and the movements of the characters, which is no problem. It's just a very nice style to the series, and some might be turned off by the way some of the characters look because of the proportions of their bodies or how long their arms are to their necks or legs, but it's mainly there because of just allowing us to see more emphasis on their dance moves and positions. So, let's get into the message of the episode. So, the big focus was the frame and the flower. That was, like, the big message of the episode. It was for Fujita to be the perfect frame for Mako to bloom into a beautiful flower. Now, all perverted jokes aside, when you think about that... What this meant was, is that Mako, she was someone that was always struggling to become a really good dancer. It was like she was in a pot, like this frame, that was limiting her growth. She was just, you know, trying to get as much life or sunlight as she could from the sun, but she just couldn't because the way the pot was just restricting her, she just could not grow as big as she possibly could be. And so she was just gasping for life while she was with her brother trying to do ballroom dancing. And so when you see this, when, you know, she actually blooms into a good flower and Fujita is a perfect frame... We see her just become something massive, something very beautiful, something that just makes everybody stare at her and realize, holy crap, she is a really good dancer and that she is definitely shining out there amongst everyone. However, 
the big thing about this was is that this could not have been done if someone like Fujita wasn't like he was. If he wasn't someone that was able to pick up on things, body movements, and notice it. It's been shown constantly throughout the introduction of the series that Fujita is someone that he may not have as much professional knowledge as people, but he's able to pick up on things on how characters move, and he's able to just throw things together real quick, and he's able to kind of copy it and dance with it, even though it might not have much flow at all with the previous moves of dancing. Still, he picks up pretty fast, and thanks to him having a lot of, you know, potential and allowing him to realize what he needs to do or when he needs to mix things up, that's what he was doing. He was doing things to make things always interesting, and he was making it to where Mako was kind of becoming the lead role throughout the dance, which is technically a good and a bad thing. Let's focus on what the message of this was. Fujita, as a character, we found out that he was someone that was never noticed, he was always someone that was an outcast, he never had anyone's attention at all. And then he finally found out how it feels for people to look in his direction, he felt happy, he felt like, holy crap, people are actually noticing me, people are being kind to me, and he was really taken back by how many people just did that for him, especially when he took, you know, Hyodo's spot. When he took his spot, and then he had everybody stare at him when he was just replacing him, he realized how it feels to be on stage, and so he liked that. And when you look at this episode, it's kind of like he was still doing that, but he wasn't wanting the entire audience to stare at him. He was just trying to make sure that Mako was happy and she was focusing on him. So in reality, he got what he wanted, but he kind of brought down the amount of people watching him to just one single person that was focusing totally on him, which was Mako. So he got what he wanted in the end, but at the same time, though, he sacrificed the big thing he wanted for her, which in turn, even though it was a nice thing to do, he hurt himself in the grand scheme of things, and let me explain why. So it is revealed that the judging of the competition, it's not just judged by just one person. They look at both people, which makes complete sense. I mean, if you're having like a, a duo, like dance, like you have two pairs on that, it makes complete sense that, you know, they're going to focus on both partners. Not going to just focus on the male or female, they're focusing on both. And so, if one does bad, obviously it's going to drag down the other one. That's just how it's going to be. And let's explain, once again, the message of this episode. It was symbolic but also focusing on the frame and the flower and he was being the frame while she was being the flower and when you look at you know let's say flower pot okay let's take a flower pot for an example when you look at a flower pot you usually stare at the flower. You stare at what is inside of this flower pot. You don't really take much of a glance at the, you know, exterior where the pot is. You just look at the flower because it's beautiful, it's colorful, and you just want to smell it or whatever depending on what type of flower it is. And so when you look at it, you, you don't really pay attention to the frame. And that's what happened here. She was blooming so much that Fujita could not be shown. He was like invisible amongst the audience. Nobody even noticed him. Even though he was doing such an excellent job, you could kind of say he did his job too well. He did his job way too well to where he hurt himself. Since the judges actually look at both pairs and all that, like both people are part of the partnership, then that would mean that since he was basically invisible, he was rendered utterly useless. They do realize that he probably did a very good job. They realize it couldn't have been done without him. But that's the problem, though. Even though he did such a good job, that's not what it should have been like. It should have been a perfect blend and balance between both. And also, he is the leader. And, I mean, the way he was going about that, he was kind of like he was leading, like, a musical band or something. He was the dude that was, like, in front of the choir and all that, telling him how to sing or move or whatever. And that's kind of what he was doing to Marco, but he wasn't even focused on, noticed. And so that's probably going to hurt his score in the very end, and which might cost it to where he might not win this competition at all because of him being just straight up invisible. Now, to emphasize this point and the meaning of this, you can look at the ending song of this episode, and you'll see Mako, while she's dancing in the ending song, she's dancing by herself. Now, if you go back to the previous episode, you know that, you know, Mako is dancing with Fujita. And so when you look at the differences and all that, you can see what's trying to be implied here is that Fujita, he was doing a good job, like I said, too good of a job. He just, nobody saw him. Nobody realized what he was doing, and... Mako was just dancing so beautifully that everybody just focused on her. So, good stuff. Very, very good stuff in this episode. And I was just very surprised with how it was done and handled. Wonderful episode. Now, besides that, let's talk about the art and animation. So, usually... 
I have to compliment the series. It's doing a very good job with its art and animation, the way it kind of makes it very stylish when it comes to the way the character's body proportions are. I've already discussed that in this video. However, there was a few things throughout this episode that did show that there was some things that kind of irked me a bit. And that is that there was a lot of still frames throughout this episode, or reused images from previous episodes, or the flashback. Now, I know more scenes were kind of added to the flashback and get more clarity to it, and it put both of the sister and also the brother other at fault, but there was a lot of reused animation, which is to be expected, it's understandable, and so I don't really have a problem with that, because still frames do happen too. However, this series requires a lot of attention, and I discussed this when, you know, Ballroom first began, this is a series that's going to be very taxing on the entire, you know, group, the entire studio that is working on Welcome to the Ballroom, because this type of series that focuses on dancing is going to have a lot of character movement, and so there's going to have to be a lot of, like, a lot of frames in between the movements and stuff, and the animation is going to be ridiculous if it's done right, and you can see that some of the animators, they are trying to do more still frames and actual animation, and it's a way to kind of cut corners. I mean, it looks beautiful. All the art and animation looks really beautiful when it's done, but you can see that they're trying to cut as many corners as possible when it does come to trying to decrease the length of the body movements of the characters. So I do hope this doesn't become a very big, big thing, because this was a very important dance, and it looked very good, it looked very good, but I really hope it doesn't get to the point to where it's very, very, very noticeable when it comes to the still frames that kind of degrade the quality of the episode, but overall, besides that, it was a great episode, I have no problems with it, so let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and please be safe, Chibi out.